Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Nights of Horror. Today we got a very uh, special video. So today on, on social media, I've been saying that I'm going to bring on a new person for the Nights of Horror, a third, if you will, to kind of make it a trio finally. And today that day has come. This right here is Logan. Now Logan, I've uh, I've the way we actually met was um through some concerts actually. He is a, a musician and he plays guitar in uh, various tribute bands um and just is just a fucking badass guitar player. Um I saw him through a band called Made in USA which is a Iron Maiden tribute and from there he's been going through various other bands and and working with other bands as far as bringing uh live music to life which is a huge thing uh in society and it's one thing that I support 100% cuz live music is always better than the uh, the what you hear you know what i mean so um Logan for starters thank you for um taking the invitation to being part of the Knights of Horror, man. This is going to be a fun oh, journey, and this is just a start, mine, man. Dude. Pleasure's all mine, man. And I've been following you guys for a while. Um, I'm, I'm, my whole thing is music and horror. It's always in music and horror. It's just kind of in my blood. And uh, Horror Nights was a big part of how I found you guys. I'm, I'm always looking at like horror speculations. Like I go, on, I go on your channel, and I go on SoCal Exploring, um, and that's just kind of how I found you. And um, pretty much, like I, well, how long ago was it when I commented? I think I commented on a on a on an HHN video like a few weeks back, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. You mentioned Iron Maiden pops or something like that, and then I think I commented on your Iron Maiden poster and was like, oh, dude, I, I was in this tribute band, and that's kind of how we kind of formed this this friendship. So, yeah. uh, and then I guess just kind of went from there, and I guess I'm now a part of the channel, which is pretty dang awesome. But, yeah, man. No, um. We've been talking the last couple of weeks about just horror and and everything and and just you know talking not only just horror nights but horror movies and just music and and a lot of things. I mean, look at your collection for you know. I mean, you got oh, freaking God. the Titan the Terror right there. You got you know a bunch I, of different. I gotta have Titan the Terror, bro. But I mean, this isn't even all of it. Like I don't know if I told you, but I'm currently moving. So I had to pack some of it up. But yeah, I'm a big physical media nut and just I like to. Cl- shit <laughs> yeah no oh, no yeah you got the posters in the back you got the oh, yeah. got the t-shirts on this one's signed by john carpenter nice uh, yeah i'm a big john carpenter junkie but oh halloween junkie uh, i don't i don't know if you could tell but <laughs> yeah no halloween's halloween's great man i love halloween um but john carpenter man that guy is just a, a visionary man i love his work and i love what he does what he's done with cinema and over the years he's just made some iconic movies that you know, yeah, we'll never... he, doesn't think, he doesn't really think so. He's so down to earth about it all, and he's just influenced everybody. And his movies were made on like shoestring budget. And, oh yeah, you know? dude. <laughs> Halloween was such a low budget film, dude, and it's now one of the most iconic horror films of all of all time. So it's it's insane, man. So man, so let let's talk a little bit about you, man. So you you do a lot of uh, you know outside being of, of a big horror junkie, you're also a big um, a music junkie, and you you you've performed with a, a lot of you know a, a tribute bands at some pretty uh, big venues, you know, like House of Blues in Anaheim, um, you know Garden App, some some pretty good venues, and and you've you've been doing this for years now. What made you want to really uh, start the whole uh, the tribute band, uh, the path that you're going down right now, and just and just playing in all these bands, man? Well, um, Iron Maiden has always been my favorite band. When I was a kid, oh god, well, I still I can, I'm only 25. I still consider myself a kid, but uh, <laughs> um, but well, I, I, you know it's only gonna last for so long. But uh, when I was around eight, I started playing I started playing guitar, and the first band I actually got into was Kiss. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, um, and then uh, Iron Maiden followed, and the first song I heard by Iron Maiden was off of the Fear of the Dark album. It was the opening track called "Be Quick or Be Dead," and just that fast drum intro and just the music video just blew me away. I had never heard anything like it, and I just holy, I went holy shit, I I, I want to do that. 
Um, yeah. And I've seen Maiden now six or seven times. Um, but ever since I was a kid, I, I, I wanted to start an Iron Maiden tribute band. I just, what I would do is I, I well, I, I, I bought a songbook, an Iron Maiden songbook uh, from my local music shop, and I just read through the whole thing. And I just put on every album, and I just played to every single album that was put out. Um, and then I just, I always just kind of just played Maiden. It, it just kind of grew a part of me. And specifically, uh, Adrian Smith is uh, one of the guitarists in Iron Maiden, and that's who I kind of grew very fond of. And in the Iron Maiden tribute, I, I played his parts. Um, so anyways, um, so just years of just playing Maiden, and then I came across Chris, uh, who is the singer of Maiden USA, uh, he was, uh, I don't know if, if, if you know, but uh, but before Maiden USA, there was another variation of the of the band called Somewhere Through Time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Chris was singing through Somewhere Through Time, and the bass player, his name is Wes, and he's currently the member, he's currently the bass player in Maiden USA. But anyways, uh, uh, I was supposed to join Somewhere Through Time, actually, because I, uh, I, I found these guys on Facebook, and they were local, because like, that's always a big thing, too. Where I, I, you know, I've, I'll, I'll come across bands who need a who need a certain guitar player, and like they're way out in like Texas, and it, it never works out. But these guys were local. I'm like, holy shit, these guys are great. I've been playing Maiden since I was a kid, and they need a guitar player. Um, so I, I ended up messaging them, and I sent them a, a couple of, of, of videos of me playing, and um, they were really thrilled. And then uh, unfortunately, they had broken up, uh, and then and Chris had come to me and said, Hey, man, I'm starting a new Maiden tribute called Maiden USA. Would you like to join? And so Chris and I just kind of formed what is Maiden USA now. And then Wes, who played in Somewhere Through Time, came to play bass for Maiden USA. And pretty much it's gone up from there, man. I've been blessed to share the stage with those guys. They're a lot of fun. They're really talented. Uh, I've played House of Blues before with an old band, but never to a packed house. Like, like it just the the first the first image when those curtains open. And I just saw, you know, like other doors, like the first show, there was almost like 2,000 people there. And yeah. I was nervous, man. I was just more just like, holy crap, like this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. And so the first song, you know, and hearing people sing back my favorite Iron Maiden song that I'm playing into them is just the greatest damn feeling. But anyways, yeah, it, it's just kind of just been a blessing and just a ton of fun. And, and I'm just, I'm thrilled to do it. You know, I make a, make a, make a, a little bit of money for you know, doing something I love, so. Oh, yeah, that's um, always the best, man. That's that's it, man. I got to ask, because I, I've thought about this many times. Every time I go to the House of Blues, how does it feel playing on a stage where you've known, like, Anthrax and other bands have played on? Like, it, it must feel insane, you know? Like, you're playing on the same stage, like, Anthrax, Kill Switch Engage, Sublime. Like, all these big bands have been there, and you're playing on that same stage, man. How does that feel? Well, I'll tell you what, the... the first feeling i ever got of that thinking holy crap you know someone so stood where i'm standing playing guitar was actually over at the whiskey in hollywood nice uh on the central strip i mean i mean it, it's a little venue and it's really not that hard to, to to get a gig there nowadays um a, a headliner gig is, is harder but an opening slide it's really not too hard but the, i was 16 when i first played the whiskey and i was thinking to myself holy shit like the doors played here yeah uh, Eplin's played on this stage. I mean, you name it, they've played on this stage. Like a Motley Crue, uh, all these big bands, yeah. Motley got their name, man. I mean, so it was really just, you know, uh, just a big nostalgia factor. And ever since then, I've been just kind of marking down in, 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 in my head, like, okay, I played on this stage, and uh, this band's played on this stage, and kind of just keeping a tally of all the stages that I've, that yeah. I've hit. But, um, yeah, I mean, House of Blues is, is I mean, everybody's played the House of Blues, and the first time I played House of Blues, I was actually over at the old location, uh, over at Downtown Disney. Now it's moved to what is it, the Garden? Uh, Anaheim Garden Walk, yeah. Garden Walk, yeah. yeah. Uh, which I actually really like what they've done to the to that new one. I mean, the old one was yeah. cool, but like this one is so much, it's so much better. But anyways, yeah, it, it's I've been really lucky, and I've got a lot of cool people in my life helping me out, getting me there, and um, as a as a professional. Profession. I don't really count it as a profession. I'm, I'm just kind of doing it for fun. And if something happens, great. Um, I'm just, you know, you, you can't get into this for money, you know, yeah. because it's never going to work out if you do. Uh, unless you're a pop artist, and I, I'm not. So yeah. kind of, and especially in tribute bands, like, you know, you, you know you're you doing it for fun. And that's yeah. all I'm doing it for. 
Definitely. So. No, that's that's the biggest thing in the end of the day, man. I mean, we all come to these shows because we're all fans of the music and we want to just hear yeah. the, you know, the music. So, and that's we, yeah. we're the biggest up there on the stage. Like we're yeah, the yeah. biggest one, man. I like we're, we're not there to pretend, you know, uh, to, to pretend that we are the real thing. We're there to just kind of pay tribute because we love the band so much definitely we want to give everybody the the most affordable iron maiden experience especially me i mean their tickets aren't cheap uh to see the the, the real iron maiden you know and uh they're not always in town of course so it kind of gives everybody a chance to kind of close their eyes and just pretend you know that that they're at an iron maiden concert and that's oh our yeah goal. Definitely. No, I've had so much fun at Made in USA concerts, man. I've been to so many that now. First time I ever saw you guys was at a Santa Fe Spring Swap Meet back when they had like the old stage. So I love that the Santa Fe Springs. Honestly, as much as I love like playing gigs like House of Blues, Santa Fe Springs is my favorite place to play. And you know why? Is because we have to play for three hours. Yeah. And 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 that's awesome because when it's the hardest thing to make a one hour Iron Maiden set because. You have so many, you know, I mean, Iron Maiden's got such a catalog of songs. So we're sitting there and we're going, shit, like, like what are we going to do? Because we want to play this one, this and this one, but we're going to go over our time slot. We can't do that. There's yeah. a curfew. Uh, Santa Fe Springs, we got three hours. We can throw in some deep cuts uh, and the hits and just, you know, yeah. play a show that everybody wants to hear. But that's the most, that's the best place to play, in my opinion. Well, I yeah. like it, too, because you guys always throw on songs that I've never heard live or you don't even rarely see, like, Flash uh, of the Blade is one of my favorite songs, and I barely hear that live at all. You know, I don't know why they don't play that one live because I mean, the, they used to say they they didn't play it live because uh, because uh, there's the 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 lead in that song requires at least three guitars, but now they've got three guitars. They've had three guitars for over yeah. you know well over twenty years now, uh, well, just about twenty years, and um, I, they could very much well play it. I, I don't know. I I don't know how that works, but. I do know that uh, Rod, their uh, their manager, and Steve, their bass player, that they make the set list. So, you know, that that's just kind of how it goes. But there's so many Maiden songs that I would love to see play live that they don't. But I don't know if you caught their uh, last tour that came around in September. Did you happen to go to that? No, I missed it. I wanted to go so bad, too, because it, it, yeah. they played Aces High and all that, and I was so mad that I didn't. I had to work, actually. I was working nights at that point. Oh man, they were just. I, I had seen them like I've seen them like six or seven times. Like I said, I don't remember, but that was one of the best times I'd ever seen them. And they actually threw in a couple of that they haven't played in a long time, yeah. uh, in a long time actually. Like there was a couple of songs that I was surprised that they played. And, Holy crap! They played at a bank in California, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the first time I'd ever been to that place. It was cool. Uh, I mean, the band, of course, they got, Maidens never put on a bad performance, at least that I've ever seen, but. Uh, the the venue it, it it's a soccer stadium I believe isn't it Yeah uh, yeah uh, at the soccer stadium the the where I was sitting I mean uh, Chris got like front row tickets like on, on his Facebook like he posted Aces High with like Bruce coming out and he's like right there and like I I got goosebumps watching his video but um I you know I'm 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 25 and I you know I'm I'm not in my full on career yet so I don't have that kind of money to drop so I got yeah. some note leads. But uh, the nosebleeds, the, the the sound wasn't that great. Like sound was kind of bouncing everywhere. Uh, but I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, just seeing them in the flesh and doing doing their craft is just why I paid for the tickets. So yeah, no, I saw uh, I saw the Misfits there when they were when they came around, and uh, it was just a good show. I mean, I had seen Misfits. I was like the first time I ever now saw the Misfits. I was. Singing? What happened? Uh, now, now was that with Danzig singing for Misfits? Yeah, that was Danzig. Oh, yeah. Original Misfits, yeah. Um, and the first time I saw the original Misfits was actually back in 2017 at the forum, and I actually got like really like right in the fucking front, like at the rail. I want to go to that so bad. Yeah, it was a. I actually caught um Doyle's pick, which is really cool. I have a pick collection. I've been to Doyle a couple times at Nam. I don't know if you if you've ever been to Nam. Um, I want it so bad. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I usually go every year. Uh, Doyle. And Jerry only are usually there. I've, that that that's where I met them. They're like the coolest dudes, man. They yeah. are so, and they look so menacing, but they're like the sweetest dudes. <laughs> the vegan freaking monster and uh, yeah, good old Jerry vegan. only. <laughs> um, so going into, of course, the world of music and metal, which also comes hand in hand with the world of horror. 
Um, one of our favorite events, obviously, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, of course, there's so many great uh, other SoCal haunts out there as well with Not Scary Farm, Dark Harbor. Um, I enjoyed LA Haunted Hayride this year. Not a lot of people did, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, never that. You haven't been there yet? Never been to LA. I was trying to go last year, but we had so many. My girlfriend and I had so many things planned. Like We had, we had something Halloween planned. Uh, at once every weekend, or um, two events per week. Yeah. Weekend. No, I I think with the the hayride, it is such. Um, it was a fun event, especially since it got revamped by um, Plague Productions, and I love that. Uh, they they are they do amazing work, and it, it was such an, a a fun time. Um, I mean, it had a whole story around it. So if you're really into that interactive kind of trying to figure out a story and everything. That was really fun. Um, and then, of course, you got... I, I, the only one I haven't done of the SoCal Haunts so far is uh, is Six Flags, which was another major one. But do I really want to drive all the way out to Valencia just to go do it? You know, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, I'm not not, not going to diss on Six Flags. I, 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 I ha- granted, I haven't been to that event since... I went to Fright Fest once. I was It was like 2007 or 2008. I don't remember liking it that long ago. I thought it was okay. I had already experienced uh, Universal Halloween Horror Nights, and I had gone nuts, and it just didn't really quite meet the mark. Um, I don't know if anything's changed. I've heard various opinions on it. Um, it hasn't really interested me in driving all that way to go, um, especially with like a kind of so-and-so reputation. So one of these days, I might check it out if I don't have anything going on some October, but... Like you said, I, I don't think it's worth the drive. Definitely, but. yeah. Well, now you're part of the crew. We'll probably hopefully get media for that, so that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but we know we know a couple people that work there, part of the Tormented Society. So uh, um, definitely, if I ever do go out there, I'll go hit them up because I want to say hi to them and yeah, I, what's up. I, I I would like to check it out. Like like I said, I hadn't been in so long. You know, I, I've heard various things about it. I would like to go check that out, see if anything's changed, but. Yeah, definitely. No, I, 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 th- I think so too. I mean, I've heard some stuff in the last couple of years that it wasn't too good, but we'll see what's up. Uh, but let's talk about Halloween Horror Nights, my man. Um, we've been talking a little bit about it the last couple of weeks as, as far as speculation goes, and even if the event will be coming at all this year because of what's been going on in the world. Um, but I want to hear what you think about the event overall and what you want to see at the event, what you got some speculations for this year. Um, I know I've read some of the comments, and me and you've talked about them, but I, I know that um, the fans in the audience always love hearing different speculations and, and different uh, eventual properties that we would love to see come to the event. Right. Tell us some of yours, my man. Well, I've been going to HHN since, oh gosh, like, two, it was like 2007. October 2007 was the first time I had went, and I think at that time, Jack the Clown, if I'm correct, was currently... Like, he was the mascot. I know at Florida, he's their, he's still their mascot. Yeah. I think for a couple of years, Jack the Clown was Hollywood's mascot for a while, and then they got rid of him. Um, but um, yeah, that year, man, I just it was one of my first haunted events I had ever done. I had done knots before that uh, in elementary school. I thought it was the coolest thing. But then, nights, you know, some of my favorite horror films come to life. Like that was just oh. I, I think the first maze I had ever gone in was uh, Texas Chainsaw. It was the remake for Texas Chainsaw, that 2003 remake. They had made it into a maze in 2007. And still to this day, like I've gone every year, but still to this day, that one is probably in my top three favorite mazes of all time. It nice. just, the smells and the smells and just uh, the outside facade and just everything about it was amazing. But anyway, so I just was hooked, man. And I just went, Every year, uh, uh, my father got, uh, he's the one who bought my, my brother and I tickets to go to that thing. My, my father was a big horror fan. He passed away in 2013, but he was a big yeah. horror fan. So I definitely, that's okay. But I, well, it's not okay, but you know, it, just, it is what it is. But yeah. he, uh, he, he definitely is, was a major influence on, you know, my love for horror. Yeah. I mean, his favorite horror film of all time was John Carpenter's Halloween. And I feel like I've kind of just carried that on. Uh, just John Carpenter in, in general, but um, he had got us tickets to Horror Nights, and we just we started going every year, uh, every year until he passed. Um, and it was just just a fun experience, and nothing to me tops it. 
Um, like I, I've gone to many different haunts, but I don't know. Halloween Horror Nights will is just a hard to beat, man. It's really hard to beat, especially when you've got famous movie properties that everybody knows and loves, and that's just what sells tickets. So definitely, no, yeah. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights every year tries to deliver some of the best quality uh, premiere content and and you know entertainment for everyone which I think is a big challenge for them every year. And I think that's why a lot of fans sometimes will uh, <laughs> shit on them after each year just because of the black walls and everything. But I don't, yeah. think people, I don't think people realize and understand how much time and effort actually goes into putting into these things, especially when you're on a very tight budget. And That worries me a little bit. Uh, honestly, now that, you, now that you just brought that up, uh, being that we we're going through this pandemic, that if that cuts in December, because I think they they start building mazes in what like like August or something. Usually or they actually they'll start building them within. Well, Hollywood will start building them from now until going all the way till like opening day, really. They get they get started, but like I remember, like was it like was it last August when I started seeing them do some serious work on those facades? Or yeah, yeah. it was sometime in the summer. But that that worries me now because we're in a pandemic. Like, is that gonna? Are the mazes going to be affected by this because they don't have the, you know, the manpower to put people out there? So from what I've been reading as far as Universal goes, they've actually just gotten OKs and, and permits and to make all their construction workers essential workers right now. So awesome. That's good news. Yeah, as far as projects go, because I know Universal's got uh, – both Orlando and Hollywood have a lot of major projects and Japan – they have a lot of major projects on the line right now with everyone getting a version of the Nintendo World, of course, right. and – um, Orlando's getting a brand new theme park added to their slate of theme parks already. Um, and of course with HHN construction coming around. So everyone is still essential workers. And I guess if you really put it in a way for HHN, when it really, when it really goes hand in hand, I mean, you don't really need a lot of people doing builds. I know right now, of course, with the whole pandemic thing, the, uh, the limit of people was like 10. So, I mean, having 10 people spread out building a long ass maze you'd be fine you know i mean you spread everybody out everybody does their section and yeah i think my worry is is that they're gonna they're gonna put all this money into you know putting up these mazes and then suddenly they're gonna go crap you know like they're pre they're predicting and i you know i'm just kind of taking this day by day i don't i i have thoughts about it but uh, you know i i'm just i'm just worried that they're gonna put all this money into these mazes and then uh Fall is going to hit, and then the, the virus is going to come back maybe even harder, and then they're going to go, oh, sorry, can't put on the event, even though you guys yeah. put all this money working into these mazes. That's kind of a worry. Yeah, know? no, I, I definitely agree, and I, I've been reading a lot of fa like a lot of like theories and stuff as to if they do do a haunt season this year, how it's going to look and what it might look like, and a lot of what I've been reading is, of course, temperature checks going into the park. Um yeah. Of course, wearing masks and a lot of hand sanitizer and uh, soap and, uh, you know, washing hand stations around the park. Um, a lot of – majority of – maybe all the rides while uh, at the event might be actually closed because they don't want a chance of people – That's going to suck for the lines. <laughs> yeah. It really would. Yeah, it really would. Um, I heard a lot of restaurants might be closed, so they'll maybe have more carts out to give hand service so they can just kind of hand everything out. And you'd have to kind of walk around the park eating or I drinking think, and everything. I think with certain times, it's gonna the certain time is gonna be scarier than the actual event this year. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, I was reading, and these are all just theories. So I mean, I don't even know if any of this is gonna happen. But I was also reading that they might not even sell al alcohol this year because of what's going on. They don't want anyone to be any stupider than you know right. the, some fans that actually do come in, um, and I was hearing they actually also might make the event. 21 and over this year just so they can keep that safe. That's great news actually yeah. no i agree <laughs> i'm not not dissing on anybody who's underage no i'm really not um but i i've seen it on your channel i've seen other channels talk about you know stranger things has kind of brought in a certain age demographic uh, but i mean i don't want to be a hypocrite i've been going to this event since i was 13 you know so I was definitely in that age demographic at some point, but I, I wasn't a stupid kid. I was with my, you know, my, my parents, you know, walking around and whatnot. But that might, I mean, 21 and over might help lines a bit, especially if uh, rides are going to be, you know, closed. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That might be, a, but that actually, now that you say that, you know, uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but 
Billie Eilish, you know, maze that was potentially leaked. I mean, not not really leaked, but it was speculated. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I wonder if John Murdy is kind of going, well, maybe if we are going to make this 21 and over, maybe we shouldn't do a Billie Eilish maze because Billie Eilish's fans, you know, are under, I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them are underage. Yeah. So a um, lot to um, think about. I'm sure you guys going under a ton of stress. It's funny, too, because actually uh, my friend Eddie brought up in our last episode of East versus West, or one of our last episodes, that it's funny when a speculation map first comes out, and then when the second version comes out, a lot of the, the like title properties usually change. For example, Gremlins and Sabrina got scrapped. So you think this is Warner Brothers' way of saying, like, we're going <laughs> to give you the rights, and they agree to it at first, but then when it gets speculated and it happens to be right, you think they just pull their rights, like they pull their properties away? That could be a possibility, and um, I'm just glad that Beetlejuice isn't getting scrapped. Because yeah. Because if I mean, I'm I'm not gonna you know crap on Sabrina, and and I love Gremlins. I've never really watched Sabrina. I I've tried to get into it. It wasn't for me. Um, and I know there's a lot of fans out there that love it, and that would be great if they got their own maze, uh, for it. Um, but and I love Gremlins. I I think we talked about this. I I don't know if we did, but I I love Gremlins. I don't know if it would necessarily work as a maze, per se, just because there's, you know, I'm not really scared of tiny little monsters popping out, and that was kind of proven in Stranger Things last year with, with having the demodogs. I mean, there's, there is an effective way to put animatronic animals as scares, but through the, when that's your only monster in the movie, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's, it's going to be really hard to do that. Uh, it would be a lot of people getting attacked and jumping out and scaring you, but... Um, but if that if that's true, if Warner Brothers really you know sees the leaks and go, oh, okay, we're gonna take that, then I'm really glad that Beetlejuice wasn't affect wasn't affected by that. I've been watching a Beetlejuice maze. God, I've been commenting on on their social media for the last couple of years, begging them for Beetlejuice maze. I mean, yeah. shit, dude, I've, I've got a Beetlejuice tattoo. The snake, <laughs> man, yeah. I've got a Beetlejuice tattoo. I, I've wanted a Beetlejuice maze forever, and like I I, <laughs> I spelled out for them what it could be like and i got like 200 likes on on this post like a year or two ago I'm just like why don't you guys just do a beetlejuice maze like you you, you have the character walking around the park yeah. um and the, the facade would look excellent and why don't why aren't why don't uh let the the guests that walk through the maze let them be the the people that are inhabiting the house that are that the maitlands the ghosts are trying to scare out so yeah. like we're the people that they want out of the house which would be really damn cool so yeah. if that's if that's going to be a thing this year, I don't care what other mazes are there. Like that's got my ticket bought already. <laughs> Definitely. No, I, and we, I, what I was, I, I, I agree. No, Beetlejuice would be great. There's a lot of iconic scenes I would love to see. What I think would be an awesome transition too for Beetlejuice in the, in the maze is like, there'd be one scene where you walk and you see the, the, the model of the, the town. And then like the next scene that you walk through, you're actually in that model of the town, which would great be idea. so yeah. awesome. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you checked out. Uh, there was an art exhibit that came around recently called "I Like Scary Movies," and um, they had a Beetlejuice exhibit, which like literally brought a lot of those sets to life, but like in an art form, which was really cool. So, to kind of go through that and sit in the Beetlejuice grave and you know the the um, Inferno and everything, it was really cool and to yeah, really see that, all that. that yeah, be, that movie was meant to be amazing. Like, there's just so many yeah. iconic. That's, that would totally fit, man. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know why they haven't done it, or on, on, on other than licensing reasons. Like, I don't know why they haven't done it already. No, and especially with, of course, the success of Ghostbusters last year, which yeah. honestly was a really solid maze. And Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and those are the serious, but it wasn't really meant to be. You know, it was no, yeah. To be cool, you know. Yeah, no. If if anyone's seen that movie, it's not a scary movie. It's it's a it's like a comedy. It's a comedy horror movie, you know what I mean? And, you know, you have four guys that get together and they just hunt ghosts and, and it's four comedians at that, you know what I mean? So, I mean, to, for them to bring that to life, it was really cool. And, yeah, I mean, I, I was defending this maze from the start. I mean, I knew this maze from the start was like, this is going to be a good maze. A lot of people are doubting it because it's a comedy movie. I'm like, but it's got a lot of interesting ghosts and it's got a lot of cool scenes that they can really bring to life and which they proved. <laughs> comedy horror like every like i thought i was trying to remind people it's like horror nights has had comedy horror before yeah. ghostbusters even came i mean evil dead is considered comedy horror not a lot of people realize that well it's kind of dark comedy horror but 
Ash vs. the Evil Dead. I mean, that wasn't my favorite maze. It really wasn't my favorite maze at all. But just yeah. property alone, like they've a lot of people just forget that they've introduced comedy horror quite a bit. And Ghostbusters, just you know, I I don't know. I remember seeing the the advertisement for that last year. They put out that commercial, and I just I lost my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I lost. I I I bought that uh, Horror Nights Ghostbusters T-shirt from last year. It's uh, it's, it's one of my favorite. Uh, horror shirts to wear and this the merch last year i think was one of the best years for merch ever yeah, and man. if they're gonna have beetle if they're gonna have beetlejuice merch this year like goodbye wallet <laughs> right no and, and i was exactly that's exactly what i was thinking for one of a, ma- a maze that i would love to see eventually come down the road which would be an iron maiden maze can you imagine just like eddie all over the t-shirts Okay, I think that's how. Okay, I think that's how we got connected was because yeah. you had mentioned that, and when you're in one of the videos, and then I I, I commented on it. Um, yeah, dude. Oh yeah, it, it was your SoCal Exploring video, I think, right? It was when you were talking with with SoCal Exploring. I think when, that was that was one of them. Yeah, but I've brought it up since. I mean, I, I keep yeah. bringing it up, and I'm not gonna stop bringing it up till we get this damn maze. Oh, it's so, dude, I'll, I'll I'll stand out there with picket signs with you and. Uh, no, I mean they've had Sabbath, they've had Rob Zombie mazes, they've had sla- they've had a Slash maze. I mean Alice oh, Cooper and yeah. I mean, uh, but and and all of those artists work really well with horror. Yeah. I mean, and Iron Maiden. I mean, I mean, I I want to I want a maze called Iron Maiden Fear the Dark, and that would be perfect, dude. Just uh, Eddie coming out at you, and uh, I mean, pretty much what people are speculating about Billie Eilish about you know how having, having her songs being intertwined into the maze well iron maidens would work way better in my opinion than billy yeah. eilish but i understand that they're they're trying to sell tickets i get it uh selfishly i would much rather have maiden of course uh i'm biased obviously but i i, I get it i get the mentality uh they got to make money uh i i just hope that you know i i, I just hope that like i said i, I, just, I just hope that it's not going to suffer this year because of you know, like you said, if it's a 21 and over maze, you know, for, for that. But I think I would rather have many other artists than Billie Eilish. Oh, yeah, maze. hands down. No, and, I'd rather and have... I, I think, I don't know, man, with Iron Maiden, not only do they have, like, a lot of horror-influenced, of course, music, but I think I've learned more history through Iron Maiden <laughs> than in history class. Like, yeah. hands down. Like, yeah. you know, I wouldn't know who freaking... Uh, um, Winston Churchill was if I didn't listen to Aces High. You know what I mean? It's like that's, that's how I learned who Winston Churchill was. <laughs> and it's like now I've memorized that that whole speech because of Aces High. So it's well, like that was right. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, no, it's funny, funny you say that because I, I remember being in history class and my teacher brought up Winston Churchill. And I was like, wait a minute, do you listen to Iron Maiden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's I remember. I remember uh, one time in like language arts class, my my buddy was reading a, a a book and it had like a bunch of quotes, and he brought and he showed me that Winston Churchill, and I could just hear it in my head, and then I just hear the opening guitar for freaking Aces High, man. It was, it, it, you know, I mean, that, so that shows you how much influence it has on um, today's society, especially with a band that's gotten no freaking backing on any radio stations coming up and and I making it. So- I go on and on about how yeah. successful they are and they don't have to sell out. Like they're the only band in my opinion nowadays uh, that have been around since before 1980. That's when their first album dropped, but they've been around since the late seventies. Um, but they're the only band that does what they want and people buy into it. Like oh, they yeah. don't have to have a reality show. They don't have to sell out per se. They do whatever the hell they want and people love it. And, you know, yeah. and, and they've never had any, I mean, people argue that their, comer- that their most commercial song is Wasted Years. And I mean, it, yes, compared to the other ones, but it's a kick-ass song. Like, it's nowhere near commercial as some of these other metal artists that have come out. Yeah. And, and they're still doing it. Like, they're, I mean, they, it's, the same, it's the same lineup since the, uh, since the Peace of Mind album, mm-hmm. uh, and, except with an added member. And people just buy it, and Bruce is one of the only singers nowadays that really hasn't lost his voice. And the guy had freaking throat cancer, dude, and, yeah. and he's still killing it, man. He's just killing it. And I, they're one of the few bands that just 
you know, that they, they do whatever they want. They don't have to conform to anything. And yeah. uh, they, 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 I, I can't think of off the top of my head any other band like that. No, and yeah. then to do a, for them, for, if Murdy was a, and Murdy's a metal fan, and, and I, I, I'm sure he's thought about this. I mean, he, he's got to have thought. I mean, he might not be the biggest Iron Maiden fan. I don't know him. I don't know if he is or not. But he's got to think, like, when he's thinking of bands to put on a, a, a maze for, he's, I mean, how does Maiden not pop into your head if you're a metal fan, you know? I think he is a metal fan, and this is why I bring that up. When you go down the freaking escalators, what's playing? You oh, know what I mean? Man. Today's I heard Blitz Number of the yeah. Beast, I heard Dio, I heard freaking Metallica, I heard Pantera. I'm over here freaking almost starting to mosh pit on the damn escalators because yeah. this music is so good. I, I will say the escalators during regular Universal kill me because it just takes so long to get up and yeah. down. But Horror Nights, I'm sitting there belting out Dio and Maiden and, and, and everybody's looking at me like I'm some foreigner. I'm like, what are you guys doing here, man? Like, <laughs> Oh, dude. My favorite thing is to get to get people's attention is uh, especially when they play Number of the Beast when he does the scream, which is a once in a lifetime scream. I am the one in the freaking escalator that just screams out as well, and people just look at me like this guy's fucking insane. I'm like, no, this is fucking Iron Maiden, and when that fucking part comes on, you scream with him. Yeah. No, yeah. but I, I, I get a kick every time Chris does it on stage uh, yeah. when when we're doing Iron Maiden tribute. Uh, it's just the coolest thing because we usually have um, we usually have like these these fog jets and we have a guy that times it perfect as soon as that scream as soon as that scream comes just fog just shoots into the air and we all raise our hands and it's just it's iconic man so how, how do you not do that when you when you're hearing that song in public man so I mean with HHN man I think this maze would be a perfect fit I mean. Maiden obviously has that fan base. They have a lot of people that will actually, even if they weren't fans of Hornets, would come just so they can experience this maze. You know what I mean? And merchandising, I can see Eddie, like the face of this. I mean, I've seen some awesome tour merch where like Eddie's on top of like the form or something and he's like grabbing it or something. I can see Eddie like a nice would, tall Eddie with grabbing like the universal freaking the pillars and stuff. It'd be awesome. I would lose my damn mind. If if they had Iron Maiden HHN merch, I would buy all of it. I I would buy. I would I too. Would buy all of it. And I they don't even make shirts that fit me, so I would just buy it and hang it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would go crazy. Like I, I I don't know. I can't tell you my reaction. I I that would be insane, dude. That's like two worlds that I love colliding together, and that's just I don't know. That's a crazy thought. So if that happens one day, if we're lucky enough, I. I, I might die happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'd probably sell the masks. Uh, there would be a lot of Eddie uh, merch, man, and I would have to buy it all, and I'd be broke, but it'd be so worth it. <laughs> I would not regret a thing. You know, it's it's Eddie, man. I, I will freaking do anything for that mascot. But, yeah, man. I mean, so what other predictions? I mean, we, we can geek out about Iron Maiden, me and you, all day because yeah, we're, we're huge fans yeah. of the band. What other predictions you got for HHN that you would love to see or hope that comes in the next couple years? Let's go with predictions first and like what could actually happen and then we'll go to personal wants. So I'll, I'll be a little realistic here. Um, this particular maze or property is definitely a big want, but also very realistic. And I'm surprised, honestly, that the speculation uh, didn't have this listed on there. I was really taken back because I was 99% certain that it was coming this year was uh, Halloween 2018. Yeah. Uh, uh, mainly because they took a break last year and Murdy pretty much said, we're going to give, you know, Halloween a break. Uh, but now, you know, that they've had that break and uh, the the second movie, or I shouldn't say the second movie, but the, the sequel to Halloween 2018 is supposed to come out this year. I would think it would be a great advertising tool uh, to have a Halloween 2018 maze featured in Blumhouse. I mean, obviously Blumhouse and Universal are hand in hand and Blumhouse always has something. Uh, at Universal, at least for the past couple of years. So I figured, okay, Halloween 2018 would be the Blumhouse maze this year. And to be quite honest, I was really excited for that because I don't know about you, but the last couple of Blumhouse mazes, I just they've been on the bottom of the list for me. Uh, they've been uh, pretty <laughs> shitty. <laughs> to be quite honest, I'm not a big Blumhouse fan, period. Yeah. Uh, but the Invisible Man surprised me. I really liked The Invisible Man, and Halloween 2018 was a great film. So 
I was really banking, you know, and who knows? I mean, it's, we, we haven't gotten any, any maze uh, announcements yet, but yeah. Um, anyway, so that's, that's one I feel could come. And Murdy has said he would like to do all of the Halloween movies one day. I was really surprised two years ago when they did Halloween four, I was like, Holy shit. Like out of, out of all hollow, I mean, it's not my favorite Halloween movie, but I, it's a, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, I, I love them all, but I've got, I mean, I've got my, my favorites, but I was yeah. surprised that they were in Halloween 4. I was like, holy shit, like, out of all Halloween movies, you're going to do Halloween 4? So then I heard that he wanted to do all of them. So I was like, okay, we're going to get a 2018 maze here. Uh, yeah, definitely. But, no. uh, so I don't know. I, 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 I've got hopes on that. Um, unfortunately, I do see Billie Eilish coming if the age, if, Age, if 21 and over isn't put on as a requirement, uh, I, I do unfortunately see Billie Eilish coming. I don't want it at all. Uh, I really don't want it. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I can't be selfish. Can't have it all. But it, 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 there's usually like one to two mazes, ex with an exception for last year. There's usually like one to two mazes that I don't care about. Um, so then I'm not as stressed the whole night. I'm like, okay, I don't want to go through those right now anyways. I'll go through them next time. Um, but... Um, Last year was stressful because I wanted to hit all of them like super fast, and I didn't have front of the line, so I had to really plan that because there was nothing that I wanted to miss. Um, but Billie Eilish would be one that I would go through if I had nothing else. It was if it was the end of the night and I still had the time, I'd go through it. But it's just uh, I, I think the majority of the people, at least that I've talked to, feel how we do. So yeah. I'm hoping that Universal or Murdy will take that into consideration. Going okay, well they really don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I'm really hoping, yeah. especially with this last speculation map, uh, it looks like Orlando is starting to take that in, in, in consideration, um, because maybe she'll probably be featured on that, that fountain show that they have, but I've also been seeing that she might be having to do the music for Universal Monsters, which I feel kind of bad for Orlando if that's going to happen, because... But, but you know what, I would rather have that than a maze, to be honest yeah. with you. But Slash was doing such a great job. Like, like I don't know, man. Oh, he's I mean, gonna still do the music for uh, us. So, so that's speculated. Okay. So, oh, oh, for good, us, it's good, speculated. Good. Okay. Okay. And now that's another thing. Uh, Universal Monsters. Let's let's talk about that. Um, I loved the last two years. Yeah. Um, with the Monsters mazes, honestly, 2018 the Universal Monsters maze was probably my favorite maze of 2018. Uh, really loved the one last year. It wasn't my favorite Killer Clowns, I think, as, as much as it was yours. Uh, and I think most people loved Killer Clowns the most last year. But uh, uh, Frank Time Meets the Wolfman was very strong. Um, I'm a little pissed off, though, when I saw the speculation that it was going to be the bride. I was yeah. a little pissed because we got gypped on the creature oh, yeah. for the last years. And the creature, man, is my favorite universe. Universal Monster, and I think you mentioned he's yours too. Is that is that right? One of my favorites. I love. I love. I mean, my you know my dad and every, my dad. You know he loves like monsters and creatures and and you know like all these sea creatures and stuff. So I've kind of grown into that world of just liking creatures. And how can yeah. you not like you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? They're pretty much the OG. I, I don't know how they couldn't feature him at all, man. Yeah. Like I, they 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 put the invis the damn Invisible Man in one scene in 2018 but they couldn't fit in a scene of you know the creature so i don't know um i was really hoping that we were going to get a creature maze but i mean I'll, I'll i mean universal does universal monsters rightfully you know that they, they should do a good job uh they they because you know they're universal monsters but they, they they've done a great job every year i'm not really worried about it is it a maze want uh in place of another not necessarily i mean i i we've had it two years now i could do without it in place of something even cooler um yeah. you know but i'd rather have that over billy eilish <laughs> right no i don't i don't blame you billy I'll, I'll take anything over billy eilish to be honest anything in the world even if it's a shitty blumhouse property i will take it even doing an invisible man maze it might be a little difficult but i mean i don't know if you saw it did you happen to watch the new movie yeah i've seen it twice and i've really enjoyed it uh i don't know how they can pull that off but I would love yeah. to see the challenge. There's a lot of scenes I know they can bring to life. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how they can really pull that off, you know, I mean, unless you reveal him in his suit, but, you know. Right, I was thinking that there would probably be a, probably like a bit of both. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, they, they they were kind of testing the waters with doing in, invisible stuff, like I said, 
and that uh, Invisible Man uh, scene in the Monsters Maze a couple of years ago, and um, they did it a little bit in Ghostbusters last year, didn't they? Uh, that was they, a they, dope scene with the black yeah. lights and the heads yeah, floating. That, that. One of my favorite scenes in that maze. So I, I think they could probably do something, you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, John is John Murray is a creative dude. So if that's what they're gonna do, then I have all the faith in the world. But um, other than that, realistically, I, I can see Haunting of Hill House coming. And at first, I, I was really not excited for it. And I, actually, but I actually just rewatched Haunting of, of, of Hill House uh, while we've been in quarantine. It's a solid show. I, it's not. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, I, I don't think it's the greatest horror show ever. Uh, a lot of people really made it, really hyped it up to make this, to, for it to be this amazing show. And it had a good ending, and it was very well made. I liked uh, the very subtle things in the background that, like, you know, ghosts just hanging out in the background that tripped the crap out of me. Uh, it was really great. And while I, I, while I was watching it, I was going, okay, you know what? I could totally see this being a maze. be a ton of yeah. fun. Uh, it's a Netflix property, and Netflix. Netflix has, you know, with Stranger Things has kind of uh, come hand in hand with Universal now. And that's another thing I'd, I'd like to get into is Stranger Things. Yeah. Um, I love Stranger Things. I've, shit, I just watched, uh, I just really watched a couple episodes with my grandmother tonight before we, we started doing Skype. Uh, yeah. My grandma and I have watched Stranger Things one through three just over and over again. She loves it. Um, the first, the first year that they had, it was great. Uh, I'll be honest, last year it was my least favorite maze. Oh, and yeah. that's, that sucks because honestly, uh, I, season two is my favorite season, uh, and I, I I think I'm biased because when it came out, I was it was a time in my life where I was having a ton of fun, and I just remember being so excited that October uh, when it was coming out, um, and I so just kind of biasedly season two was my favorite. So I was really sad to to see the maze do so poor last year, and I went with a bunch of friends who loved season two, and we were just kind of that was the first maze we we had done last year. Uh, because we knew that Stranger Things was the most popular property and we wanted to get it done first. You know, we kind of went through that whole map and figured, w you know, which ones to do first. And it was not, not a good start to the night. <laughs> it really was <laughs> right. a start to the night. And, but, then, but then it was okay because we went into Killer Clowns and that was the best maze. But um, I, I'm just surprised that they're not doing Stranger Things 3 this year because Orlando did such a superb job uh I'm surprised and I'm not surprised uh, because, two, like I just said, season two did so bad last year that maybe they're going, okay, well, people don't want it. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I would really like to see a season three, you know, maze. And I think we got gypped with that with that added scene last year because that was the best part of, of the maze last year was the added season three scene. Um, and so I wanted more of that, and that's all we got. So Yeah, anyways, especially because uh, Orlando got a dope-ass Oh my god, I was mad. Scene, and we got just the cabin. I was mad that season that 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 they got a better season uh that, that they got a better Stranger Things maze. Um yeah. and I'm even more mad that that wasn't on the speculation map, but we'll see, things can change, but yeah. Uh, Sabrina, I kind of mentioned that earlier in the video. Um uh, I don't really know the property too well. I know they have a lot of creatures and I love creatures. So, I mean, even somebody who's not a fan, it could be a cool maze just from what I've seen. I I, I can't say I don't like Sabrina because I've never watched it. And I know that they, it has a following. If they can do something cool with it, I, that's great for those fans. Uh, it's not something that I'm really looking forward to. I'd yeah. rather have many, many others than Sabrina. But I, I don't know how you feel about it. But. I've never seen the show, but uh, a lot of people have been telling me it's a lot like Riverdale, um, which uh, I'm really yeah, not a fan of. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because I was, I, when I first saw that, I was like, oh, that looks like a satanic Riverdale. <laughs> yeah, no, and I guess it ties into that same universe. Um, oh. So it's part of the Riverdale universe. So, I mean, I'm not a fan of Riverdale. So if I'm not going to be a fan of Riverdale, I probably won't be a fan of Sabrina. Yeah. Um, however, it's well, not being speculated anymore. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, I was just going to say, well, that's good. It got scrapped. Gremlins, we, I already talked about that. Um, it got scrapped. Well, apparently it got scrapped, you know. I mean, this is all speculation, but yeah. uh, uh, great movie, great property for, for a maze, probably not. Uh, not, not, my, not my first choice, but uh, what else was speculated? Did we hit all of them? Jordan Peele original. Oh, oh, oh. Um, okay. I, I liked the Us maze last year, and I liked the movie Us. I, I like Get Out and Us. I thought they're 
great, great movies. Uh, Jordan Peele's off to a great start. He might do something cool. Um, I wouldn't say I'm too excited for it, just because he doesn't have a big repertoire of like if they did a John Carpenter maze, and I know that's biased, but but looking at it from like oh my god, he's a classic director and he's got this big catalog of horror. Or Jordan Peele's got two horror movies. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It doesn't really excite me, and I'm sure he could probably do something really cool. But I don't know. If I were to do a director, like a horror director's maze, I'd want somebody a little more notable. Uh, but Jordan Peele, I mean, I was surprised to not see a Candyman speculation on that. And I know he didn't, he's not directing it. He's producing it. But I was certain I was going to see a Candyman maze this year based on the, the new remake. But yeah. I don't know you. Yeah. I uh I saw I I've watched the trailer and it's really on. I'm gonna be honest, it's not really catching my interest right now. It's um, not for me either. I know there's a but there's a lot of people who really are who are really excited for it. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the original Candyman. I mean, it's a good movie, but it's not one of my favorites. I don't even think I own it. Um, and I I own most horror movies, but um I um I I I don't know. Like I I I know a lot of people were excited for it, and I think Jordan Peele's got a good vision, so. I, I think a maze would be, I mean, better than, than a, an original maze, in my opinion. Um, I've got a whole list of other mazes I would rather have, but I don't know. I mean, I could go back and forth on a Jordan Peele original maze. I go through it. It might be cool. But yeah, definitely. I don't know. Um, I see it happening. So, <laughs> so with predictions out of the way, what are a couple mazes you would love to see eventually come down to that? Some dream let, mazes. Let me just pull out my list here. <laughs> <laughs> got a list. Look at that. That's that's legit right Dude, there. Dude, I've got a. I I I do this thing on on my own time, man. I I've been speculating on my own uh, horror night mazes for the last couple of years, just for fun. And I was right about a, a lot last year. And I hadn't really even followed those guys who who do those horror speculations. I I knew Killer Clowns. I just knew Killer Clowns was coming. Um, I knew Stranger Things too, but that was obvious. Um, I had a feeling Us was coming. Uh, House of the Thousand Corpses kind of took a turn for me. I didn't think they would bring that back because they had done it a few times already. But and last year, I I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't my my favorite. It was fun, but it w- definitely wasn't on my top. Yeah, but, it uh, looks like it was just kind of thrown together last minute. But anyways, um, let me just go through here. Uh, my dream mazes. So if if John Murdy, okay, I always had this dream that like. John Murdy would run a contest, and it'd be a really cool idea. John Murdy, if you're listening, do this, please. Or <laughs> anybody at Universal, run a contest where, where somebody, a, a fan, could throw in, within reason, throw in like a, a, a horror property that they want to see as a maze. Um, and if you win, then, then it becomes true if they can get the licensing. But if John Murdy came to me and said, okay, I, I, I want to take a break this year. I, I want you to, to to I want you to to design the mazes. This is this is what I would do. Okay, so first of all, Terry Tram needs to come back. Uh, yeah. It needs to come back. Uh, and as much as I, I wasn't a big fan of it in 2018, I mean, it kind of it was not a very good Terry Tram. But it's just fun walking through those the, through the back lot, man. So speaking like, of the Terry Tram, did you actually see they just demolished the uh, Whoville set? Yeah, it's gone. No, you're it's gone. My heart right now. Yeah, it's all gone. My heart is shattered right now. Yeah, who <laughs> built that's gone? Why? I I have no idea. I I I, I was on Twitter one morning and someone took a sky cam and it was just How a. Did I read that because I usually keep up with that stuff. I didn't even see that. Yeah, it was just a blank. Uh, it was just a blank freaking area in back of the Bates Motel. Like I was like, okay, listen, that's an iconic set, and I get it. But if you fucking dare lay us a, a hair on the Bates Motel, that's where someone's mind, getting stabbed. <laughs> that's where my mind's going right now because I'm thinking, oh crap, okay, they demolished Grinch, which is right next to the Bates Motel. I don't think I would pay them my money if, 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 if they did that. I don't think I would go to HHN. They they would, I think they would drop in stock and they would lose so much fandom because that's such an iconic set of that property that they they couldn't do I that. Ride I ride the tram during regular Universal just to see the Bates Motel and yeah. the Psycho House. Yeah. Just, that's my sole reason. And to see somebody dressed up as Norman Bates walking out with the body and, you know, coming towards the tram. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's heartbreaking, man. I mean, Grinchmas is a thing in December, so I'm, I'm, I just, I, I don't get why they would do that because that there's a lot of photo ops and stuff that goes on around there, right? Yeah, well, the last couple of years, I noticed they haven't been doing Grinchmas on the tram, which they would usually stop right there and do a little performance. I've never been to Grinchmas. Yeah. Okay. So the last couple of years that I've seen, they haven't been doing that. So, I mean, they're focusing more in the park rather than on the studio tour, which is a bummer. I did miss, the, however, the one summer that they did the late night studio tour where they brought out, like, Frankenstein's monster at the iconic sets, and they had, like, Marilyn Monroe come out. And they had a bunch of, like, just different, like, di like opportunities that you could only see at night that you couldn't see during the day. And it was a really cool thing. Like, they had actual live performers and stuff. It was really cool. Um, well, I mentioned Terror Tram. I wanted to come back, but this is the theme that I want. So they've had a Friday the 13th terror tram before, and that worked really well because, you know, you're in the woods and Jason, yeah. out and, you know, tents. Well, here's another one that they haven't done, but they've, they've, they've used this property several times. And I'm surprised to not see this property make its, its way to title the terror tram, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre. It hasn't Massacre, gotten its own. Texas Chainsaw Massacre terror tram on its own might be really damn cool. Uh, just a bunch of cannibals out there. I mean, I mean, just the way that the lighting works on the Bates Motel during the Terror Tram when you're walking out there, like it's sometimes you you can't really like sometimes I don't know about you, but I forget that it's the Bates Motel because of the way that they the, that they put sets right in front of it, and you're the way you're walking through it, um, it just looks like a rundown building. So they could totally make that work for Texas Chainsaw. I mean, there's just a lot that they can make work. Imagine you know walking through the back lot, and all of a sudden you just you know, see Leatherface and and turn turn on his chainsaw right behind you. I don't know. It would yeah. work, man. No, it would. Um, so that would be my want for Terror Tram. Halloween twenty eighteen. We already went over that. Uh, and here's the maze that uh, I have been begging them for for years. Other than you know Beetlejuice, uh, John Carpenter's version of the thing. You know, yes, the original remake of the thing. A lot of people, not a lot of people realize that John Carpenter's is a is a remake. Yes, it is. Uh, of, Howard Hawks the theme, um, but they, they gave us the prequel uh, in 2011, and I was a I went with my friends in 2011, and I, I was a kid. I wasn't super nitpicky about it. I hadn't even seen I I still haven't seen that prequel, uh, mainly because I've heard it's got you know CGI and the thing and CGI to me just don't work in my head. Like yeah. the reason that, that the thing is such a John Carpenter's the thing is such a masterpiece is because of the practical effects, uh, uh, is one of the main reasons. Um, I just think it would be a solid maze. Like, I just think it would be a super solid maze. A lot of fans I've seen want that maze. Um, so, I mean, I know I'm biased. Jo I've talked about John Carpenter already in this video, being my favorite director. But we'll, we'll move on. But that's no. definitely big John one. Carpenter is the fucking man, dude. I One of my favorite movies is a John Carpenter movie, which is They Live. So it's like... They Live is amazing. Amazing movie. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that would work for a maze, but, I mean, it, it, I mean just having... Listen, dude, all they would have to have in that maze, the entire maze, all the only thing I would have to hear is I've came here to to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Like, that's all I have to hear in the whole maze, and I'd just be satisfied with that. Oh, man. Oh. Roddy Piper, man, he's great. Roddy, Roddy Piper, rest in peace, man. But yeah. if, if John Murray said, okay, I'm going to organize just for you this year and not have to worry about anybody else, I'd say, okay. I want a John Carpenter movie as every maze. <laughs> yeah. That'd be the but, ultimate event. Being realistic to sell tickets. Uh, so John Carpenter's the thing. Beetlejuice I already have on here, and that's speculated, so that's making me jump up and down. But here's one that you and I talked about privately a little bit through Messenger. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, specifically. Dream yes, Warriors. Dream Warriors. Uh, uh, Dream Warriors. And I know it's... Most I, I I talk to most horror fans and they say it's either the first movie or the third one that's their favorite. I I, I honestly hear more people say that Nightmare Three is their favorite Nightmare movie. Uh, the first one will always be my favorite, but, but Nightmare Three is set up like if you watch that movie, it's set up like a maze. Like the set designs are just it's like oh my god. Like I, I I was watching that movie the other day, uh, all in quarantine here and going holy crap. Like how has this not been? A uh, 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 HHN maze. I know they've done Nightmare on Elm Street countless times. They've had Freddy at the event countless times, but a specific Nightmare Three Dream Warriors maze, in my opinion, would work really well. I don't know if you've seen that movie recently, 
but it's I haven't seen it in a, a bit, but I I've seen it. It's a good movie. Man, it's it's um it's that whole movie is just one big maze in my opinion. And yeah. uh, it's funny we're we're talking about this. Um, there's a music video. Uh, so the band Dokken, I'm gonna geek out a little bit here. Uh, if you've heard of the band Dokken, they're an '80s band. They're my they're in my top three favorite bands of all time, mainly because the guitar player of the band, his name is George Lynch. Uh, even over Adrian Smith and Iron Maiden, George Lynch is my favorite guitar player. And one of the sole reasons for that is because Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Uh, if you if, if you watch Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the ending credits song is called Dream Warriors, uh, and it's by Dokken. Uh, there is a music video that was put out in 1987 uh, to promote the movie and to promote the band Dokken. Dokken wrote the song Dream Warriors, and they did a video with Robert Englund and the girl in the video, the girl in the movie, uh, Patricia Arquette, I believe. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a whole video featuring Dokken in the Freddy house and in the movie, uh, and uh, George Lynch, the guitar player for Dokken, uh, his his guitar and uh, his guitar in the music video look it, it's it looks like it's made out of out of a skeleton. It's skull and bones. Yeah. And when I was 13 years old, my, my dad showed me this music video. And I, at the time, I was becoming a big horror fan. And I was already a metalhead. I was like, what? Mixing horror and metal? That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. So that just kind of changed, honestly. I know it sounds dramatic, but it changed my life. That wow. music video alone just, it made me want to play music more. It made me want to watch more horror movies. And the reason I'm bringing this up, because you and I talked recently, uh, I showed you that I'm getting, a new, I'm getting a new guitar custom made for me. And yeah. it's actually the one modeled after that Skull and Bones guitar uh, in the music video. So anyway, so there's a little bit of bias there in my want for Nightmare on Street 3 being a maze. Um, like, I would probably cry if I heard the, the Dawkins song playing over the maze. But yeah. um, but honestly, but given that, uh, all that aside, Nightmare on Street 3 is set up to be a, 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 hor a Halloween Horror Nights maze, in my opinion. Rewatch it and then tell me it's not. Definitely. Uh, but, um, and I, and... Titans of Terror are like, they're my horror guys, man. So I'm pretty much going to try to put a horror titan in all of my mazes, which brings me to uh, my next want for the 13th part four, the final chapter. Nice. Uh, specifically the final chapter. Uh, they've had night, or they've had, uh, they've had Friday the 13th and Jason several times, I know. And they've even had a Titans of Terror maze, which honestly I really liked. Uh, but I was really pissed that they didn't have Michael in it. He's my favorite titan. Yeah. Uh, obviously, um, but anyways, I would like to ha see a Titan of Terror theme for one year, just uh, one maze representing each Titan and Leatherface getting the Terror Tram. So I think part four, I, I, I think, is a fan favorite. Uh, I'm in several horror groups on Facebook, and yeah. uh, most Friday the 13th people uh, say that part four is kind of the staple film. So if they could do a maze based on the staple, based on the film, like going into Tommy Jarvis's house, you know, played by Corey Feldman, and uh, having a kid uh, running around with, you know, at, at the end of the movie, the climax, he, he shaves his head to make it make himself look like Jason to try to get him to stop attacking. So yeah. if they had something like that going around, and when Jason's mask falls off, and he's got that ugly face, it's just, man, I, it's, I'm not even, to be quite honest with you, and I, and I get a lot of heat for this. I'm not a big Friday the 13th fan. Uh, and and I, 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 I like one through four. Everything after that to me just is hit or miss. Like part yeah. six is okay. One, one through four are decent movies. And even part one is not my favorite. Uh, two, three, and four are, are just, you know, when it comes to those movies are gold. But comparing them to Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street or even Texas Chainsaw, like Friday the 13th is not my favorite property. But it does really well for Horror Nights mazes. Like, I've never been through a bad Jason maze. I've never been yeah. through a bad maze. I don't know about you, but I, no, I always... It's been, have... it's been fun, all of them. I, I enjoy it just to see those characters come to life. Yeah, I always have a good time, man. And and they always make... Uh, Horror Nights, I've noticed, always makes good set designs for forests and camping. Yeah. I don't know. It just I, I really brings me into the movie. But anyways, um, so yeah, part four, Friday the 13th, would be a great maze. Stranger Things 3 is another one, like Orlando's. We've talked about that already. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really I, I, I'm, I'm surprised and I'm not surprised that it's that it's not coming this year, or it's speculated that it's not. Uh, but we'll see. Nothing Definitely. is for, for sure yet. Iron Maiden, Fear the Dark. 
We, yep. we, we talked about that a bit, and I won't go into that anymore because I will, I'll get on a tangent and I won't stop. <laughs> um, here's another one, though, that uh, a lot of people I've, see, I've seen really want this maze, and I was speculating that it was going to come last year, and some people were speculating, but it got leaked to be Pandora's Box. And when I first heard Pandora's Box, I was thinking, is that code name for Hellraiser? Yeah. Because you know, Hellraiser the Box. And oh my god. Could you imagine a Hellraiser, Hellraiser maze? Just the chains everywhere, all the demons. It'd be dope. I, Titans of Terror, man. Pinhead. I mean, he's one of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it, it would be really damn cool, man. Um, another one would be the Howling. Um, the uh, American Werewolf is my favorite um is my favorite werewolf movie um of all it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time and i i, I mentioned i think i mentioned in the video that i've gone to horror nights every year um but now that i'm talking about it i actually did miss a year uh, and it was 2014 uh my my dad had passed in 2013 and i i really just 2014 i wasn't really feeling like going that year because it was just you know bringing up memories with going with my dad it was really hard so I didn't yeah. end up going, and I wasn't really following social media. So I, I at that time, so I wasn't sure what mazes were out that year, and I'm really glad I, I, I didn't find out because it would have been maybe really sad that American Werewolf was coming that year. So I found that after the fact, uh, and I'm kicking myself to this day that I didn't go to that because I've seen the, the YouTube videos, and I'm just, I'm so mad. That's the one maze at HHN that I didn't go through that is one of my favorite properties ever that I didn't get to go through, and I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm hoping John Murdy will bless me in bringing it back one day. Yeah. So I, I, so I, I put the howling down because I felt like it would be more of a uh, more realistic than bringing back American Werewolf in London. Like if you wanted to do another werewolf movie, uh, the howling is a classic. Uh, you know, not everybody knows it, but not everybody knew American Werewolf in London either when it came yeah. out. A lot of people, a lot of people I know actually learn about these movies because of Horror Nights. I don't know oh, about yeah. you. Definitely no. People, there's a lot of movies that there were some movies that I that I had never seen going into Horror Nights, and I was just like, on, I'm gonna be honest, American Werewolf in London was one of them. That's, and that's, no, that's, was, that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool because I I think it's a good way for 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 people to learn about these movies. And then when you go through the maze, and then you go home and watch it, and you go, oh, I re I remember that part from the maze, and yeah, you know, um, I I I don't know off the top of my head if that has happened to me. I just know a lot of people that 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 has happened to. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't really know too many movies that I went through and had, I hadn't seen. Oh, I, I hadn't watched Ash vs. the Evil Dead, so but The Maze wasn't that great, um, in my opinion. But lastly, I'll get to my, my last want here. And this one, I haven't heard anybody talk about. Uh, and depending on how it's done, it could be really good or it could be really bad. Um, the Twilight Zone. Yes. And, uh... What inspired this idea was the Creep Show maze last year. Uh, Creep Show and Trick or Treat, uh, which was, I believe, 20, 2018, right? Or, no, yeah, 2018. Yeah. Um, I love horror anthologies. You and I talked about this a little bit privately. Uh, horror, an horror anthologies, are, other than slashers, are um, my, it's my favorite subgenre, like Creep Show. And Creep Show 1 and 2 are like some of my favorite horror movies of all time. Uh, so when the. And I was surprised to see a maze for it. I was like, really? Like, they're going to pick Creep Show? Like, that's awesome. But I didn't see that. Um, so with that in mind, I go, okay, Twilight Zone is an anthology property that, you know, everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, everybody knows. And I think, uh, who owns who owns Twilight Zone now? Is it CBS? Uh, or, CBS. Uh, CBS yeah, All Access. Yeah. Um, and I really don't want one based off of the new show. I don't know about you, but I did not care for the new Twilight Zone. Um, it had its moments. I never got to finish it. Um, I was happy that one of the episodes actually included a favorite song by one of my favorite punk bands, The Interrupters. So that was cool. Uh, it was cool. the the when they when they're going to space. Like when I heard The Interrupters, I just lost my shit. I'm like, oh, I fucking yeah. love that band. Uh, well, I I. I my vision for a Twilight Zone maze would be set up kind of like an anthology, you know, where you go through different segments. But I had this idea, if they could pull this off and do bl a black and white set design, with black and white costumes yes. and makeup, and give kind of gray, a gray, black, white kind of effect, like you're walking through a black and white movie or, or show, 
I, I, I think if they did that, it would really go down in history as one of their most, you know, innovative mazes, in my opinion. Yeah, so especially when they did the uh, the the movie in like the nineteen, I believe, seventies or eighties too. Oh yeah, uh, with Dan Aykroyd, dude. Like this uh, one. <laughs> yeah, dude. That movie was. It took some of the greatest uh, stories that they've ever done on the Twilight Zone, and they just basically brought them up to date with like the newest uh, technology and makeup and special effects, which was awesome. Especially that's the the, the plain great. one was freaking. Yeah. That's a that's a very great and controversial movie i don't know if you know the controversy behind that or um or or, or just the you know, did you hear about you am sure you heard about the accident that happened that kind of changed a lot of things in film um in the first segment uh of the twilight zone movie uh, i forgot what it's called uh, but the actor who he, he's kind of a he, he's an old racist guy who you know who gets thrown into the past and he's pretty much uh it's he's pretty much realizing what what people have gone through and he's pretty much getting karma for being racist yeah. um he actually died making that movie oh he wow was a horrible he like they they changed the ending to that segment because he got tragically killed by a helicopter uh during the making of that segment along with two children uh oh, wow. yeah it, it it john landis uh who uh, directed American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed that segment. Um, yeah. Great, great director. Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, so I can't put any blame on anybody. But um, so he got kind of blacklisted in Hollywood after that, unfortunately, because of that. Um, well, I mean, he did, he's done a couple other things since, but he never really grew because of that. Yeah. Um, but like you said, the 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 plane segment, which was I believe was directed by George Romero. Uh, who did um, Night of the Living Dead and this iconic show. man? Iconic man. Uh, yeah. Joe Don section actually is my favorite uh, from that. Uh, the one I, I'm, I haven't seen it in a while, but the boy, you know, who can do things with his mind. Oh uh, god, that, that was that was a little it, fucker. <laughs> it, 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 it's creepy, man. It's so yeah. creepy. And Joe Dante, who directed Gremlins and The Howling, directed that segment. Like that yeah. that movie, such like a it's like a it's a horror fan's dream having all these directors work on one thing. Um, but yeah, Joe, Joe Dante uh, did that, and that's just—it's a great movie. Uh, if they did the show for a HHN maze, I, I would geek out if they did a black and white effect, uh, yeah. just because it would be just so visually appealing. Like, holy crap! Like they actually did a black and white set. No, but, I think it'd be cool just to see the facade of the iconic, like the eyeball and the door, yeah, and it'd be I, cool. I, I, I'm telling you, man, I—I I, I think it would make a John Murdy, if you're watching this, man, I mean, you're welcome. You don't have to pay any royalties. Just do it. <laughs> no, yeah. You, and then as you're walking into the maze, you hear the narration. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. And then it's just, it's telling, it's going, oh, it. I'd lose my shit. You're yeah. seeing it. it, yeah. it totally, totally and then as you, as you walk through the first scene, you hear the Twilight Zone theme song. Dun, 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 and then you're just walking into the first scene. That's going to get a long line, man. And that's a big, pro that's a big property. They could totally yeah. make some good money doing that, but. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, so, man, this is basically a this is basically a podcast at this point. I'm feeling that. <laughs> I could mindless... talk about horror music all day. So, no, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's why we brought you on to the show and we brought you onto the channel because I saw your love for music. I saw your love for horror, and I was like, okay, we need more of that with the channel, and we and we want to expand more as we grow more. Uh, since we're nearing a thousand. I think it's a perfect time to start expanding. Yeah, thank you. Almost there. Almost there. I know. Almost there, man. It's been a long time coming, but, you know, since we're hitting 1,000, you know, I figure I was like, it's time to expand a little bit and get more people on board, get a third opinion on things, have a bigger click and have a bigger crew going into events, man. Uh, Triple H said it best, man. Uh, when you're looking for friends, you look to your blood, you look to your pact, you look to your family, you look to your click. And uh, it's uh, it's it's just been a long time coming, and we uh, we have we have a lot of fun on the channel, and I can't wait to uh, start including you in those things. Um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. So I mean, I see your love for Horn, I see your love for everything, and the, just this episode alone. So we're gonna have a good time. I'm looking, man. I yeah, I uh, I I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you everybody who's watching and supports this channel. I'm really excited to 
see what the future holds for this channel. And uh, I'm really excited to go to Horror Nights and, uh, and Haunts and uh, Queen Mary and, and all kinds of stuff with Nights of Horror. And thanks for welcome, welcoming me with uh, open arms, man. I, I really can't thank you enough, and yeah. I'm very excited. No, no problem, brother. No problem. Thanks for just being a horror fan and just keeping the not only horror mu- the horror alive, but the music alive too, man. Because you you're, you go out there, make <laughs> give us give us a lot of the best performances that you know. Some people are not even fortunate enough to see the real bands in concert, so these are the closest that they're gonna get to that. And you guys put on that amazing show for them uh, every time. Every time I've seen you guys, I've never been disappointed one bit. So, yeah, it's been fun. All right, so everybody, welcome Logan to the to the um, channel. Go follow him on his social media. Do you have a social media, Logan? You want to leave it or no? Yeah, yeah. My Instagram is uh, pretty simple. I, I, I keep things mostly simple. You can find me on Facebook, but um, Instagram, uh, you can get me at Logan C. Dumont. That's my name, Logan C. Dumont. Yep. C as in the, the letter C, Logan C. Dumont. So... See you guys there, and uh, I'll see you at the Nights of Horror Instagram and YouTube. Definitely. So go follow Logan on Instagram to uh, give him all the kind words, and we can't wait to we can't wait to have the future with Logan to more videos, haunts, everything. So we will see you guys next time, uh, and stay safe, stay clean, save Halloween. <laughs>